Hey everybody, I'm Chris White with the American Battlefield Trust. We hope that you're enjoying our trek across West Virginia and Kentucky as we cover some of the little known actions of the early 1861 campaigns. And that's what brings us to Shaver's Fork here on the Cheat River. Uh, we're beside Corrix Ford, which you'll be able to see over my right shoulder. Corrix Ford is the, the site of an action on July 13th of 1861. Keep in mind, we've been up to Philippi and we've been over to Rich Mountain. There are battles that take place there in June and July. Union forces immediately following the Battle of Rich Mountain, which took place on July 11th, 1861, will start to pursue two different Confederate forces. Confederate forces, remember, were on Laurel, Mount, or Laurel Hill and Rich Mountain. So what will end up happening is these Confederate forces have to try to get off the mountain and potentially back to Stanton, Virginia, which is down in the Shenandoah Valley. That's the idea of the overall Confederate commander here, Robert Garnett. Garnett has been sent out to Western Virginia. Remember, we're not in West Virginia yet. We're in Western Virginia in 1861 by Robert E. Lee. Lee saw that there needed to be a harder hand or a more firm hand to, uh, to get the Confederate forces put together out here in Western Virginia. Things did not go well at Rich Mountain. They did not go well at Laurel Hill. So now Garnett is being pursued by a federal force uh, off the mountain down into the River Valley. So as he's moving down on July 12th and into the 13th towards Stanton as best as he can, he is going to be enduring mountainous terrain rains, terrible roads, and then he has to cross and recross creeks and rivers. He's actually going to cross uh, this Shaver's Fork at a few different places. There's Kaler's Ford about three, uh, three and a half to four miles north of where we are. Uh, that's one of the Fords. He'll cross at another Corix Ford because we're actually standing on the Corix property where two Fords were. I'll show you that house in a second has to cross over the river and then back towards where we're standing. So this is a zigzag approach coming down this Shaver's Fork of the Cheat River. Garnett's being slowed down, like I said, by the mountainous terrain, by rains. Now he has a wagon train behind him that is, they're starting to have to throw furniture off the side of. They're starting to have to abandon wagons. And Garnett is seeing that the federal forces pursuing him, mainly headed by a captain named Henry Benham, a West Point graduate of the class of 1837, is in hot pursuit. So Garnett will arrive on the property of uh, William Corrick, whose house is actually right over my left shoulder. That is the house that was built circa 1851. His wife Deborah is going to live there with him. William Corrick, who owns a vast uh, amount of land in this area, who has two Fords on his land, is going to be the witness to a scene that is famous in the American Civil War, and it's going to involve Robert Garnett. Garnett is, is a 1841 graduate of West Point, uh, well regarded in the old army, well regarded by Robert E. Lee in this new Confederate army. He is going to be out here fighting his first battle as an overall commander at Rich Mountain and Laurel Hill. Doesn't go well. He's in this pursuit. Now he's seeing these, these Union forces coming up behind him. So what is he going to have to do? He is going to try to lie in wait right up in this area with the 23rd Virginia Infantry. Uh, these men were commanded by William Tolliver, who we talked about in our Romney, uh, our Romney video. He's going to start sending men on the high ground where we are, overlooking the ford, kind of setting a trap for the Union forces who will be pushing across the river. Now, as he's out here, Garnett is going to be on horseback. He's going to be really the only person that the Union Army can see as they're coming across the river from us. These are troops from Ohio and Indiana. These units will start to press forward and they'll start to receive fire from the 23rd Virginia. But as they start to receive this fire, the Union forces will return fire and they're going to fell Garnett. Garnett will be the first Confederate officer to fall, or first Confederate general officer, I should say, to fall in the American Civil War. Garnett will be uh, mortally wounded, taken up to the Corrick House uh, by Benham and other Union soldiers who are going to find his, his body laying out here on the battlefield, take him up into that area. And uh, Richard Garnett, here at the Battle of Corrix Ford, will be the highest ranking casualty. Unfortunately, he has that dubious distinction of being the first Confederate general officer to fall, as well as the first general officer to fall in combat in the American Civil War. Now, while we're out here, 
there was a cannon that they were trying to drag along as well, these Confederates. It was a cannon actually produced at Tredegar Ironworks uh, for a North Carolina militia unit. This cannon will be abandoned on the field. It will be turned over to the Cleveland Light Artillery. The Cleveland Light Artillery, we talked about it at Philippi, uh, opened the first cannon shots at the Battle of Philippi. They're so excited, these Ohioans, that they're going to take this cannon all the way back home to Cleveland. They're going to fire it off every hour whenever they get, the, get it back to Cleveland, celebrating what they call the Secesh Cannon that they captured. And that cannon is actually still on display in the, the um, Cleveland Armory uh, up in Cleveland, Ohio. So while well, the cannon captured out here, kind of a rare thing, especially at this point of the war, we have a Confederate general to fall out here. And now we have what is essentially the conclusion of what will be the Rich Mountain Campaign. Not the last campaign to take part in Western Virginia, but it will be one of the uh, will be the conclusion of those first campaigns around Philippi and Rich Mountain, which will eventually move into a new commander, which will be William Loring, Robert E. Lee, and a battle over it on Cheap Mountain, which will tarnish the reputation of Robert E. Lee, and it will be a story for another time. So we're standing uh, at the edge of Corix Ford. We've moved away from the river. We're actually standing uh, by one of our friends' uh, signs, the Civil War Trails. And these are great signs out here throughout West Virginia, Virginia, and many other states. Gary, I think they have a, a catchphrase, don't they? Yeah, I think that something like Civil War Trails, there's always something cool to do and see along the trail. Yeah, exactly. We need to start putting together a, an advertisement for them. But down here, you can see one of their great signs. It's going to uh, outline the battle here at Corx Ford. Talk about Henry Benham, uh, who was uh, who will go on to, to a long career with the Army of the Potomac, fight at Secessionville, fight at Fredericksburg, other places. Uh, a great picture of Robert S. Garnett. Garnett, again, is the dubious distinction of being the first general officer killed in the Civil War, July 13, 1861. But down here, you can get a, a good view of the Corrick House, which is a private residence from here, built in 1851. Um, you can also see where the 23rd Virginia was stationed, where Garnett would have been stationed out there, as well as his aide, Sam Gaines. Gaines actually will cross the, the Shaver's Fork, go across, hearing the cries of a wounded Confederate soldier bring him back across the river, saving his life. The man had his jaw completely blown off. Ironically, a year later, while Gaines is in a hospital, a man will show up who cannot speak right on the slate board and say that he was the man he saved here at uh, Corix Ford. A really uh, touching human interest story. But we'll see soldiers down here from the 7th, the 9th Indiana, the 14th Ohio, pressing forward against the 23rd uh, Virginia Infantry, as well as the 1st Georgia Infantry who fought down here Garnett will be killed in action and will really wrap up what is known as the Rich Mountain Campaign in the early phases of the campaigns in Western Virginia, later on West Virginia. I'm Chris White with the American Battlefield Trust, Gary Edelman behind the camera. We want to thank you for following along. We hope that you'll share this with your friends and with your family and check out all the other videos that we're doing at Philippi, Droop Mountain, Romney, uh, Perryville, anywhere you can imagine along the West Virginia, Kentucky lines here. We're going to be covering those battles for you because our donors were generous enough to support this trip uh, across these two states. So I'm Christopher White, once again, for the American Battlefield Trust. Thank you for watching, and thank you for supporting Battlefield Preservation.